I think that that is quite clear what he was saying regarding the priests and giving the right place, but at the same time saying to Zavostina that between the confessor and the penitent, I am. And usually Jesus refers to the confessors as my representatives. Very frequently he says whenever he was checking that they are my representatives. And between them and the penitent I am. So the presence of himself. Why? Probably is clear that eventually the priest is not forgiving sins. Priest usually is giving absolution. And absolution means in a visible way the penitent knows that the sins has been absolved. But of course, not by the power of the priests, but the power of Jesus. And Jesus can only share the power with the priest to purify the confessor, but not that it comes the power out of the priest himself in the sense of his being. He is only getting the power from Jesus. And that's why Jesus is, and even in the formula of the absolution is that I absolve you. The priest says the words, I absolve you from your sins, but not that I forgive you, because that belongs to Jesus himself. And he only is the representative. That's what Jesus is saying to this. And as the importance of priests is great, but they cannot assume that by the fact even that they are priests, that they are acquiring all the power of forgiving, no, absolving. But the forgiveness depends very much between the penitent and Jesus when the penitent is making the act of contrition. That's why there, that means again the trust that Jesus has the power to forgive. It means, going to the divine mercy, that Jesus' mercy is the power of forgiving sins. But again, for the sake of visibility or to hearing that the penitent hears the priest when he is using the formula and giving absolution. But absolution by itself is not the power of forgiveness if, for instance, the penitent doesn't trust in God's power and if Jesus' mercy is not acting there. Because that otherwise would be a conflict between these things which we were already talking about even in the novena that immerse into my mercy. That's where everything really is taking place all the other instruments. If I will still make a comparison, that the same is with consecration of the Eucharist. It means the bread and wine. The priest is using the words of Jesus. Take it and eat it. This is my body. That's what Jesus said. Once I was going down to the hall, to the kitchen, I heard these words in my soul. Say unceasingly, the chaplet, that I have taught you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. I desire that the whole world know my infinite mercy. I desire that the whole world know my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. Well, that is the main purpose, Jesus' purpose, to convince everybody and above all those who are preaching that the mercy is powerful and to the iota that people will really believe that that's 
fulfilling the way which Jesus proposes, or not only proposes, but telling us that we should do it, that we have the way of being saved, that we have the way that Jesus, even when he said in the gospel that I'm not going to leave you orphans, said to the disciple, I'm going to be with you always. Don't fear or don't be afraid. I am with you. So all these things are related to also what he says about his mercy, that the mercy certainly is there and it doesn't need to be seen as something only sometimes. It is there whenever we do, even once. So he is giving that the mercy acts in the same way when you, full of trust, say once as you would be saying every day. So it means that if you, before death or whenever you say, that's certainly the power is there and is acting in the way as Jesus is saying. But of course, he wants also to give us joy. That's why he is saying so many times about glorifying the mercy. Not only to be purified, but to glorify together with others. Like, for instance, in our life, that we should enjoy life. Not only to see as an instrument of one's or the other thing which makes us better. That's why in that other, in specifically in these two or three days of Novena, when he's talking about those who are, who are so good, that he's talking constantly about the glorification, that he is going to glorify them because they glorified his mercy. So Jesus wants us to be more than only once cleansed and then be detached from all the things. He wants that we will be members of a movement which constantly is active because eventually that is on finding the purpose of the eternal happiness through the happiness here. That's what many people are like that. Many people are very happy people on earth. Not only that they have great material heritage, but they are happy because of their spiritual life. I'm just saying masses for the nuns here. And they are, for instance, one was 104 years old, and now one was celebrating this year 100 years. And they are 96, and you know and how happy they are. Even if they are the one who is 100, she is still having only the stick, but the stick only a little bit because she is completely walking herself and doing only that she don't hear well. But otherwise, they are praying. In that place, you see some sort of warmness. That's only nuns, but there are many, many, many lay people which are... So that's what is the purpose of the mercy. But of course, the mercy is also for those who are in danger, that they should return to the king. Tomorrow we have the feast of Christ the King, and that's what it's all about.